Hi everybody, I have some quick news for you today. Hugo Chavez is dead. Okay, this was posted by the Associated Press. Today it was posted. Actually, it was posted Wednesday, March 6, 2013. Venezuelan time is more ahead of ours. So this is just right away. They just posted this. The Venezuelan Vice President, Nicolas Maduro, said... President Hugo Chavez dies at age 58. This is coming from Caracas, Venezuela. President Hugo Chavez, the fiery populist who declared a socialist revolution in Venezuela, crusaded against U.S. influence and championed a leftist revival across Latin America, died Tuesday at age 58 after a nearly two-year bout with cancer. And then it just goes on to say, Vice President Nicolas Maduro, surrounded by other government officials, announced the death in a national television broadcast. He said Chavez died at 4.25 p.m. local time. During more than 14 years in office, Chavez routinely challenged the status quo at home and internationally. He polarized Venezuelans with his confrontational and domineering style yet was also a masterful communicator and strategist who tapped into Venezuelan nationalism to win broad support, particularly among the poor. Chavez repeatedly proved himself a political survivor. As an army paratroop commander, he led a failed coup in 1992, then was pardoned and elected president in 1998. He survived a coup against his own presidency in 2002 and won re-election two more times. The burly president electrified crowds with his booming voice, often wearing the bright red of his United Socialist Party of Venezuela or the fatigues and red beret of his army days. Before his struggle with cancer, he appeared on television almost daily, talking for hours at a time and often breaking into song of philosophical discourse. Chavez used his country's vast oil wealth to launch social programs that include state-run food markets, new public housing, free health clinics, and education programs. Poverty declined during Chavez's presidency amid a historic boom in oil earnings, but critics said he failed to use the windfall of hundreds of billions of dollars to develop the country's economy. Inflation soared and the homicide rate rose to among the highest in the world. Chavez underwent surgery in Cuba in June 2011 to remove what he said was a baseball-sized tumor from his pelvic region, and the cancer returned repeatedly over the next 18 months despite more surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation treatments. He kept secret key details of his illness, including the type of cancer and the precise location of the tumors. El Comandante as he was known, stayed in touch with the Venezuelan people during his treatment via Twitter and phone calls broadcast on television, but even those messages dropped off as his health deteriorated. Two months after his last re-election in October, Chavez returned to Cuba again for cancer surgery, blowing a kiss to his country as he boarded the plane. He was never seen again in public. One more thing I wanted to bring to you today. This one I got from um, the Prophecy Update. Prophecy Update, uh, the site is called. It says, uh, Obama plans to extract timetable for Israeli pullout from West Bank. U.S. President Barack Obama has demanded a timetable for an Israeli withdrawal from the West Bank. Israel sources said Obama, scheduled to arrive in Israel on March 20th, wants a detailed Israeli withdrawal plan from Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu during the President's visit. The sources said the Israeli plan would be considered in what could be an imminent U.S. initiative to establish a Palestinian state in the West Bank in 2014. Obama has made it clear to, Netan to Netanyahu that his visit is not about photo ops, but the business of Iran and a Palestinian state, a source said. The implication is that if Israel won't give him something he can work with, then he'll act on his own. On March 1st, the Israeli daily Mekor Rishon reported that the next Netanyahu government would destroy numerous Jewish communities in the West Bank. The newspaper quoted Likud, 
negotiators as saying that the plan depended on Yesh Atid attending its alliance with Jewish Home, led by Naftali Bennett. We are going to difficult decisions, a Likud negotiator was quoted as telling a Yesh Atid parliamentarian. If you do not break up your pact with Bennett, we won't be able to uproot com communities if there is a need for difficult tensions. Excuse me, difficult decisions. Together we can do it. Other Israeli newspapers, quoting Likud sources, carried similar reports. They said the first step by Netanyahu would be dismantling of Jewish communities in the West Bank deemed isolated. The sources said the White House warned that Obama's forthcoming visit could characterize U.S. relations with Israel over the next four years. They said Obama aides stressed that Congress, which approved $3.1 billion in military aid to Israel for 2013, supported the establishment of a Palestinian state as a U.S. priority. The Obama people are making this a litmus test of Netanyahu's leadership and credibility. The Israeli source said Obama supporters in Congress have sent Netanyahu a similar message. They're trying to wake up, they're, excuse me, they're trying to break up the West Bank. Genesis 12, 3 looms. Genesis 12, 3 said, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. God loves Israel. That's all I'm going to say on this, but bye guys.